and then we're going to actually go into proofs. So say I give you um, secant x times sine x. These are very basic. This is the start of proofs. Secant x sine x. And they ask you to simplify, let's say. Okay? So we're going to be simplifying these ones. For most parts of proofs, you're going to try and change everything that you possibly can into sines and cosines, which is what we did yesterday. We tried to change everything as much as we could into sines and cosines to state non permissible values, right? Same thing here. So sine is sine. That's staying the same. What's secant? So this is sine x over 1, technically, is it not? And then secant is 1 over cos. Why would I put the sine x over 1? Why wouldn't I just have left it as a sine x? Because I'm going to have to multiply fractions. And you, when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerator times numerator, or top times top, denominator times denominator, bottom times bottom. Now, why would that be helpful in this instance? Sine x, 1 times sine x is sine x, 1 times cos x is cos x. Why is that more helpful? Yeah. It's just tan x. It's done. What would my non permissible values be on this one, guys? How would we do that? It'd be where cos x equals 0. So we'd say cos x cannot equal 0. And where does cos equal 0? When x equals 0. Where does x equal 0? Right? So what would it be? x cannot equal pi over 2 plus, how long does it take to repeat itself? Pi n n e i. Right? And we'd have no other non permissible values because we have no other denominators, right, that have variables in them. The other denominator is a 1. Can 1 ever be 0? No, it's 1. So we have no problems with it. We only state non permissible values when it can become 0. We agree? Okay, I'm going to give you two more to simplify, and you're going to try these. Out. And you're going to talk to the person beside you if you are stuck, because that's why they're there. Secant x, cotan x, secant x times cotan x times sine squared x. And you're just simplifying. We're not... Proving anything. Proving means left side equals right side. Do I have a left side and a right side? No, so I can't ask you to prove. You're proving nothing. I have, like, here, here's a statement. All I can ask you to do is simplify. And C is cos x divided by cotan x. Try these two out. See if you can attempt to simplify. So secant is what? 1 over cos. And these are all being multiplied, right? Cotan, some people write 1 over tan, and in some instances, 1 over tan is helpful if there's a tan in the numerator and you can cross them off or something, right? But for the most part, we try and change them as cos and sines wherever possible. Cotan is cos over sine. Cotan is cos x over sine x. What's sine squared x? The same as. Sine x squared, just, which just means sine x times sine x. We agree? Okay, so if I went to state non permissible values of this, if I asked you to, you would tell me where cos x cannot equal 0 and sine x cannot equal 0, where both of them cannot equal 0. Remember, that's the easiest MPV because it's every single arm, correct? So you can write them combined as one MPV instead of two. So when you have a cos in the denominator and a sine in the denominator, your x cannot equal pi over 2 n NEI. It's just every 90. So actually the easiest is when you are given both. Okay? You would start at 0 plus every 90, but you don't write the 0. Okay. So 
a coast can cancel a coast, a sine for a sine, and what am I left with? Sine x. And I still have equal signs in between because they're equal to each other. They're not proving anything because I don't have a right or a left side. I just have a statement. Okay, cos x over cotan. We're going to have cos x divided by cos x over sine x. So technically on the top I have a full fraction. I have a fraction of cos x over 1 over cos x over sine x. Now I told you if they are full fractions, you wouldn't write them like this, would you? If they're full fractions, what do we do? Write them side by side. Now, what if it was like this instead? Don't write this, just pay attention. What if it was like cos x over sine x minus 1 over cos x? Um, over secant, I'm making something really crazy and horrible, plus 1. <laughs> Is this a full fraction over a full fraction? This is a full fraction? This whole top is a fraction? Is this whole bottom a fraction? No. If you're questioning, what would I flip if I wrote these side by side? That's a hint to you can't. Okay? So you would have to make common denominator, common denominator, and then you could flip them. So that's why you need to have a full fraction. This is a whole fraction. If it had a plus 2, I wouldn't want to flip them, okay? You have a full fraction over a full fraction. So I actually have that, so I can write them side by side. Cos x over 1 divided by cos x over sine x. Remembering, what do I have to state non-permissible values for when I have fraction divided by fraction? Everything but the top left, okay? So the top left is cos x. That's the only one I don't have to state non-permissible values for. I have to say for the entire right side, because right now sine's in the denominator, but when I flip it, cos is going to end up in the denominator. So if they are in the denominator or will be in the denominator, you have to state MPVs. So I have to state MPVs for when cos x and sine x cannot equal 0, which is actually the easy one. It's at every 90. So I would say x cannot equal pi over 2 n nei. It's on every arm. Now, I'm going to flip them, so I get cos x over 1 times sine x over cos x, and then my cos x's can cancel, and I'm left with sine x. Hmm. Both of these are actually equal to sine x. Are they not? So, for a proof, what could I do? I could say prove that secant x cotan x times sine squared x equals cos x over cotan, and you could work down left and right sides till it sine x equals sine x, left side equals right side, you prove it. Correct? So actually, this number 2 is actually equal to this number 3. We agree? So that's what you're going to end up doing. You're going to work down your left side, work down your right side, till you would get them to equal each other. Okay? All right. Let's try a couple more. So you're going to try these ones and see how you do. We're going to simplify. What am I on for? Still not proving, just simplifying. And you don't have to state non-permissible values for the rest of these. We're just literally going to just simplify. So try these out. Okay. Try these. So this one, you could have turned every tan into uh, sine over cos, but like I said, sometimes inspect the question first before you go switching everything to sines and cos, because sometimes it's just as easy as, hey, there's one on top and bottom, cross them off. And we're left with cos x over sine x, which is? 
Now, can we state non-permissible values after we cancel? So we just state non-permissible values for sign? No. You always have to state them before you cancel because at, if at any point in time there are non-permissible values, you have to state them. I told you you didn't have to do this anymore, but I'm just proving a point. Um, you have a tan x in the denominator, so you actually have both cos and sine in the denominator. So it would be every 90 again. Okay, this one, cosecant is 1 over sine x times cotan, which is cos x over sine x. Secant is 1 over cos x. And sine x is sine x over 1. When you have fractions, anything in the numerator that is the same as anything in the denominator, when they're all multiplied, you can cross off. So this sine x and this sine x, this cos x and this cos x. And I have it equal to 1 over sine x, which is actually cosecant. Now, 6, you have to spot something here. There, you can't switch them into sines and coses because, well, they are sines and coses. So a lot of, people time, a lot of the time people just stare at it. Now, staring at it isn't going to get you anywhere. It just makes you a little freaked out. Um, we're, I told you guys yesterday that you have to remember what's on your formula sheet in order to be successful in trig 2. You also need to know that any formula on your formula sheet can be rearranged, right? You can solve for separate things. So, for example, we did the Pythagorean theorem identities yesterday, and I told you that if we want to replace cotan squared, we could move the 1 over and we'd replace it with cos squared theta minus 1. If we wanted to replace tan squared theta, we could replace it with secant squared theta minus 1. Or, indirectly, if we had secant squared theta minus 1, we could replace it with tan squared. We agree? So, right now, we have 1 minus sine squared. We have a formula on our formula sheet that says cos squared x minus plus sine squared x equals 1. We agree? If I move that sine squared x over, I actually have cos squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x, doesn't it? What do I have down here? Same. The same. So what can I replace them with? Cos squared x. And why would I think to do that? Because I have a plain old cos x on the top, and I somehow have to switch something. Cos x can never be switched to anything except for like 1 over secant. And is that going to help us in this instance? No. So I'm thinking, hey, the bottom probably is going to have to be canceled. So it's cos squared x. So the squared and the cos cancel, and I'm left with 1 over cos x, which is secant. We agree? So all I have done so far and all that you guys have done so far is simplified. We haven't proven anything because we didn't have a left side and a right side. Remember that these little cancel off signs when you cancel and simplify, what are those little cancel signs actually? They're ones. There's little mini ones. So this is 1 over cos x, not just cos x, right? There's a 1 still up here. It canceled off. It became a little one. All right? Don't make them evaporate and tell me it's cos. It's not. Okay? So, I'm going to give you two proofs now. Prove A and B. This is another example. Same, in, same deal. We're just proving it. And we're trumping it up a bit. We're going to do these ones together. So, we're going to prove that left side equals right side. If it says prove, you're going to show that it works. That's what they're telling you to do. I'm not going to say disprove this. They're going to say prove it. All right.
So, in A, we have secant x over tan x plus cotan x equals sine x. Yeah. They say prove you're proving it. Showing it works. No. Okay. So, these are all single ones, right? There's no squares on these, are there? Do you see like a squared on any of them? No. So, can I sub out any of the equations from Pythagorean theorem identities down? No. These are all squares. This is kind of like two multiplied. That doesn't help me. Um, these are like wonky looking ones with plus or minus signs in between them. So they're very specific to a certain type of question. So the only place I can substitute in is those top formulas, right? That's all I got. So let's try it out. Secant x is 1 over cos x. Over tan x, which is sine x over cos x. Plus cotan, which is it equals sine x. The key to proving is you're proving that the left hand side equals the right hand side, correct? So that means anything on the left hand side needs to stay on the left hand side, and anything on the right hand side needs to stay on the right hand side. You're proving that this side equals this side. You can't move any of it over by like adding a tan or something, okay? Whatever's down here stays down here. Everything down here stays down here. You need to follow through. You can't put little ditto marks or not do anything on the left-hand side all the way down. This is your left-hand side. You can't do anything on the left-hand side all the way down and then make the work go this way and be lazy and not fill in on this side. That does not work. That is not a proper proof. A proper proof is every single left side has a right side to it, component, and you need to keep writing it down. If you do nothing to the right-hand side, it's just going to keep equaling sine x as we go along. We're probably not going to do anything to it because it's the least complicated side, and what am I going to change sine x with? 1 over cosecant, that's it, and then I'm stuck. Like, well, that's good, great. Okay, um, so I'm just going to leave the sine x go along, and I'm going to work with the more comp complex side. So, I have a fraction over a fraction. Is this a complete fraction? No, so I'm going to be able to write them side by side, but am I going to be able to flip? No. So I'm going to have 1 over cos x divided by sine x over cos x plus cos x over sine x. We agree? And it equals sine x. That just keeps rolling down. I cannot flip the right-hand side. The right-hand side is this entire thing here. If you're like, hmm, I don't know, do I flip the first half? Do I flip the last half? Do I flip both? If you're contemplating what to flip and it's not like a, oh, I just flip this, you can't flip it. Okay? So if you're like, hmm, what part do I flip? If you're even questioning what part you flip, you can't flip. Okay? It has to be a full fraction. How can I make that side be a full fraction? I need to be able to add them, which means I need to have a common denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply... This one by sine x and this one by cos x so that my denominator is sine x cos x. We agree? So I'm going to have 1 over cos x times cos x, oopsies, divided by, don't know what I'm doing. Divided by sine squared x, because it's two sines multiplied together, over sine x cos x. Plus cos squared x over sine x cos x. And what does that equal? No. No. It just equals sine x. Whatever's on the left stays on the left. Whatever's on the right stays on the right. Correct? Now we can put that together. So we're going to get 
1 over cos x, and proofs often take up a lot of room. That is just the nature of the beast. Okay, so we have one common denominator, so we're going to write it over that. Sine x, cos x, and then in the top we can combine them. So sine squared x plus cos squared x equals sine x. What could we do now? No. Flip it and multiply. So I see this. But now I have 1 times sine x over sine squared x plus cos squared x. I need it to be just sine x. How do you suppose? I need to get that sine squared x plus cos squared x to go away. When I'm stuck, what should I look at? Formula sheet. Is there any place on my formula sheet that gives me that? Pythagorean theorem, what does it state? Yes. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals? So I can replace that whole thing with a? Isn't that lovely? Proofs are two things. One, you get them, you feel like you're on top of the world, you just climbed like a mountain. Or two, you can't get it and you're just super frustrated, you want to climb under your desk and just kind of roll in a ball and rock back and forth. So we're going to hope for one. We don't want option two. Option two is defeating and sad. Okay, We want to get to one where you just feel like, yay, it worked. So this is one. What if it was cos squared x plus sine squared x? That would still be 1. It doesn't matter, right? They're still positive. It doesn't matter if they flipped around. So we have sine x equals sine x now, which means left side equals right side, and we are happy, happy people. Yeah. Um, if you just cancel these back off, you'd be right back to the previous step. You wouldn't have a common denominator. So you put them on. If you took them back off, you'd just be back to where you were again and try to put them back on and back off, and it would just be this vicious back and forth deal. Okay? No. So we're going to go to B in a second. I'm going to give you one that's like A. Yeah. We're going to do one just like the one we just did, similar. So this is like 1a. I started it different because it doesn't sound under simplify. The other ones are under simplify. So this is 1a. I guess this would be point one, one, and this would be part two. You're going to try this one. Secant x. Minus cos x. I'm going to give you two. And then part three. So you're trying two and three. So secant is one over cos x. Minus cos x. Over one, technically. Equals sine x divided by cos x over sine x, which looks ridiculous. So I'm not going to write it like that. Okay. This side, I have to get a common denominator. I can't put it together. We agree? There's people on their phones, but I'm not quite sure why, because I'm not doing this for my own benefit. I'm really good at proofs. Okay. So I have to multiply this side by cos x. So I get 1 over cos x minus cos squared x over cos x equals, not the reduced version of this, it equals the right-hand side. You have to follow down. So you're going to get sine x divided by cos x over sine x. 
So on the left-hand side, I now have a common denominator. I can write them all over cos x. 1 minus cos squared x. So when proving, you can work the whole right-hand side and do nothing with the left-hand side. I did that with sine, right? The sine x just followed all the way around. Or you could work the entire left-hand side, your right-hand side, my right-hand side, your, your entire right-hand side, and leave the left-hand side be what it is and carry it down. Or you could work one side, and then you run out of stuff to do and start working the left side. Or you could work both at the same time like we're doing. None of those is better than the other. It's just that you need to finally, eventually, get left to equal to right. Okay? Sometimes if it's just equal to sine x, there's not a heck of a lot you can do. That one just falls down. So we're going to get sine x times sine x over cos x. And this is just over 1. Now, off your formula sheet, you have to recognize when you get cos squareds or cosecant squareds or tan squareds or secant squareds or cotan squareds, those are all Pythagorean theorem identities that you can replace. If I rearrange the Pythagorean theorem identity, that's cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, I'm going to get sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared. So this entire 1 minus cos squared can be replaced with sine squared x. Hence why I said to you, if you don't know your formula sheet, this is pretty tough. The other thing is, this side was easier. So I had sine squared x over cos x. We agree? The good thing about proofs, if they give you the left-hand side and the right-hand side, is that you can use the other side to possibly give you a hint as to what you need to get the other side to look like, right? So my right-hand side, I have sine squared x over cos. This one I had 1 minus cos squared x over cos. Well, the cos x's were at least the same. So I know somehow I have to get this to be a sine squared. Well, how could I do that, right? So you can use the right-hand side to help you on the left. And now I have left side equals right side. Okay, what about this one? I have 1 plus cos x over tan x, which is sine x over cos x, plus sine x over 1, equals cos x over sine x. OK. I need to get a common denominator here if I want to write them sideways and flip it. So it's divided by sine x over cos x plus sine x. This is an entire right-hand side beside the division, correct? How would I flip that? Trick question. You don't. OK. So it's over 1. I need to get a common denominator. This is going to stay cos x over sine x. So I need to multiply this one by cos x cos x. So I'm going to get 1 plus cos x. If you want to put it over 1, you can. Divided by sine x plus sine x cos x over cos x equals cos x over sine x. We agree? Now, we have an entire fraction on this side now. So what could I do? Flip it and multiply once you get a full fraction. 1 plus cos x over 1 times cos x over sine x plus sine x cos x. And I need that to eventually equal cos x and sine x. So this one is nice because the right-hand side's actually not very crazy, right? It's pretty simple, the right-hand side. The left-hand side, not so much. So I know ultimately in the end, I need cos x, cos x, and somehow miraculously I need to get a sine x on the bottom. We agree? Most often people don't think about this. But if you look at the bottom right-hand side here, the denominator on the left-hand side, I guess, it has a sine x plus sine x cos x. Both those terms both have a what? I can GCF a sine x out. No. And then what's left? Cos x. One. Yes. Sine x bracket, but one plus cos x. 
which is the same as and then we'll cancel and I'll have left out the GCF. So I have 1 plus cos x over 1 times cos x. In the denominator, I can take a sine x out. This is where the error happens, though. When I take a sine x out of sine x, what am I actually left with? 1. It doesn't just evaporate and go into thin air. Sine x out of sine x is a 1, plus sine x out of sine x cos x. It's just cos x. Cos x over sine x. And now these, which are attached by plus signs, anything that's attached by a plus or minus sign is in a bracket. The only way it goes away is if it has an exact replica on the bottom. So I have a 1 plus cos x. It's only going away because I have a 1 plus cos x. If I had had... If I had had a cos x down here, I could not cross this cos x with this cos x. That can't happen. The only way 1 plus cos x is going anywhere is if it has a, rep a matching replica in the denominator. Whenever they're attached by plus or minus signs, I always put brackets around them because they are one whole being. And the only way they're going away is if it has a matching one on the bottom. So because these match, they can go away. If I had a 1 plus cos in the numerator over here and just a cos in the denominator, nothing could happen. It could not cancel. And now I have cos x over sine x equals cos x over sine x. Or I could say cotan x equals cotan x. Who's more correct? No one. Cos x over sine x equals cos x over sine x. Left side equals right side. Cotan x equals cotan x. Left side equals right side. You're neither better if you're one or the other. I'm going to give you some practice questions on this, and then we're going to do some harder proofs tomorrow. Yeah. So the boxes become in different questions. One to four is like what we were just doing.